like to stop. Uh, you want to school? No, I'm good. I think I'm good. Yeah. You are. I'm good. Am I on? Yeah. yeah. Praise God. Pardon me? Oh, thank you. How sweet. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day to all of you, too. Happy Blessed Mother's Day. It's a blessing to be a mother, isn't it? Yeah, I've loved being a mother. But I want to open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, just praise you and thank you, Almighty God. You are so good, Lord. You are so good, Lord. I thank you for the uh, plan that you have with families, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the love that flows. Lord, I thank you for the homes that are dedicated to you. I thank you, Lord, for where you are, their peace and their joy and their strength, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, no matter what we're going through, that you're right there in the midst, Lord. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you that you care for us. I thank you, Lord, that you, you died on the cross that we could have abundant life here and then life eternal with you. I thank you, Almighty God, that you are a good God. I thank you, Almighty God, that you answer prayers. I thank you, Almighty God, that you save souls, that you work in people's lives, that you bring peace and joy in the midst of the storm, Lord God. I thank you, Almighty God, what a joy it's been to walk with you, Lord. Lord, you just get sweeter and sweeter every day, Lord, more and more precious. Lord, you are our delight and our joy and our strength. Lord, you what makes life worth living. So Holy Spirit, I just ask that you just come now. Lord, the message that you gave me is so simple, but yet so profound, Lord God. And Lord, I just pray that, um, that Lord, you would flow through me, that lives would be touched and impacted, that minds would be renewed and transformed Lord, I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just come and do what you love to do. Lord, just bless love, Lord God. Bring comfort and peace and joy and strength, Lord, in your precious holy name. Thy kingdom come this day. Thy will be done, Lord. Open our eyes and our ears to the beauty of our God. <clears throat> Lord, I love what Rich prays. A word within the word, Lord. I feel you've given me what you want me to share. But, Lord, I pray. Lord, I remember Kenny McGaffick saying that that um, no matter how good the word is, Lord, if the ground isn't prepared, it's not going to grow. So prepare our hearts, Lord, to receive the truth and the beauty of our God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you love him? Yeah. You know, he does. He just gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. I think Rich asked me to um, bring the word forth today because I'm the oldest mother in this place. Next month, I'm going to be 91 years old. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I think I'm the oldest everywhere I go anymore. <laughs> Not just here, but everywhere I go, I think I'm the oldest person here. But, but, you know, life has been so good to me because of Jesus. It's just I love being a mother. I love being pregnant. I thought I was eating for two, so I did. <laughs> I went from 123 pounds to 197 pounds. I waddled like a duck. My mother, used, my mother was Irish. She had a saying for everything, and she said, I can't even see your eyes. They look like two burnt holes in a blanket. <laughs> My dad said, don't come in. Oh, please don't come in. I know you're going to explode, and I just don't want to see it. <laughs> but I love being a mother. But the only thing I regret is that um, I didn't know Jesus as my Savior. When I became born again, December 22nd, 1974, in my kitchen, on 133 Clearview Road, <laughs> I, uh, Rich was 18, Stephen was 17, Dan was 14 years of age. So they were pretty much already grown. And I wished, I wished that I had been um, born again when they were small. 
because they did not have a praying mother and things would have been so much different in their lives if they had had that praying mother. There was a little boy one time going to school and it was his first day at school and he wasn't a healthy little boy, he was a fragile little boy and his mother said, Jimmy, I'm going to walk to school with you and, and he said, oh no mom, please, Don't, all the kids will think I'm a sissy and they'll all make fun of me. So she says, but Jimmy, I don't want you to walk alone. And he says, I won't. He says, Bobby will walk with me. So she noticed that there were three women that used to walk the street at that time. So she said to them, would you walk behind my Jimmy and just keep an eye on him and don't even let him know that you're watching out after him? And they said, sure, no problem. So Monday came, Jimmy and Bobby walked down the street and these three women were behind him. Tuesday came, these three women were behind them. Wednesday, they were there. Thursday, they were there. Friday, there they are again, walking behind them on the boys' way to school. <laughs> and, the, um, and Bobby said to Jimmy, uh, do you know who those old ladies are that will walk behind us? Every day, every day they walk behind us. Jimmy says, I know who they are. He says, every time I leave the house, my mother says, Surely, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. He says, at surely and goodness and mercy. <laughs> but those boys had a praying mom. You know, I wish, I heard Rich saying uh, a couple of times that when we went to, when I tucked them in at night, we would say, I, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. That's a horrible prayer to put a child to bed with. If I should die. It is. Think about it. If I should die before I wake, that, then no wonder they had a hard time going to sleep at night. <laughs> but that's all I knew because I did not know how to pray. I knew our Father. I knew Hail Mary. I knew the Apostles' Creed. I knew the Act of Confession. You know, but I knew it. Now I lay me down to sleep. But I did not know how to pray because I didn't have a relationship with the Lord. So um, one time we went to the Mount Carmel Presbyterian Church, and on Thanksgiving <clears throat> they would let the women take over the service. So this woman that was supposed to open with prayer didn't make it. So they came and they said, Diana, can you open with prayer? I said, no. And they said, well, you've got to because, you know, so-and-so couldn't make it. I couldn't pray. So every Thanksgiving, we sang the song, we gathered together to ask the Lord the blessing. So that's what I did. I grabbed the hymnal, and I stood there, and I said, we gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He hastens and chastens his will to make known, because from the beginning, the fight we were winning, sing praises to God, he forgets not his own. Amen, and sat down. <laughs> Everybody just looked at me with their jaw, but I did not know how to pray. Once I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, he transformed my life. My family said, they, they thought I went, they thought I was bonkers. They thought I had lost it for sure. In fact, they said, you better be careful. You know what happened to women your age. You're going through change of life. Well, I sure was. I was changed drastically. Amen, amen, amen. Not just physically, but well, physically too. Because God healed all of my diseases from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. He is the healer. He is everything you need. You know, Rich was asked about people going through a storm. Don't look at the storm. Look at Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus, and you'll walk right out of that storm. And he'll work all things together for good. No matter what has happened to me in my life, there is a blessing that has come from it because he has taught me to keep my eyes on him. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He loves you. His plans for you are good. He wants the best for you. He died for you, shed his blood for you, took stripes upon his body that you would be healed. And, you know, when that revelation, he overwhelmed me with his love. I really didn't um, fall in love with him until I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, which happened in April. And then I knew that everything that is in this word is true. 
I got a bumper sticker that said, God said it, I believe it, that settles it, and, and that's how I've lived. And, um, and then they, none of them were saved. And um, in fact, Rich said to me one time, I am so sick of you talking about Jesus Christ. Well, look who talks about Jesus Christ all the time now. <laughs> Yay, God! Woo, hallelujah! <laughs> but um, I started praying for them fervently. And um, I would spread eagle on their beds, put my head in their pillows, and say, your mind will be transformed. You will be renewed with the word of God. You will. You're, I bind the power of the enemy who has blinded your eyes and stopped up your ears, you will know the plan of God and the purpose that he has for you. I would be ironing, we ironed back in those days, I'd be ironing the shirts and I would say, you will wear the breastplate of righteousness. I'd fold their underwear and say, you will wear that belt of truth. You will, I declare it over you, you will wear the belt of truth of God. I'd be folding their socks and say, your feet will be shod in the preparation of the gospel of peace. I'd be stirring their food, and I'd say, Lord, I'm feeding them physically, but I pray you feed them spiritually. And one by one by one, they came to find, no, Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. Early in my walk with the Lord, he gave me the word in Acts 16, 31, a promise. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, and the house and he was true to his promise because everyone in my house is saved. He is an awesome God. So, so anyhow, what he showed me when Rich asked me to, to bring forth the word was, um, I didn't know, that was Tuesday. And we hung up and I thought, Lord, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to, to, to uh, bring forth? And he said, prayer. God has, has shown me the power that is in our prayers. Um, sometimes I read a while back that sometimes a child's only connection with heaven is a mother's prayers. And I sort of got a visual of a mother standing, the only link, that's it. The only link a child has with heaven is a mother's prayers. And I could see a mother standing with her hand on her child and her hand reaching up to God and bringing the kingdom of God into that child's life. And I was sitting, uh, I have a purple chair in a purple room that I love to sit and um, meditate on and read the word of God. And um, oh, about a year ago, I went to sit in the, my purple chair and the Holy Spirit said to me, Never underestimate the power of your prayers. I think we all do. We underestimate the power of our prayers. The, the prayer is, um, is the spark that ignites Holy Spirit, Spirit fire in people's lives. So I live in a place now where I hear ambulances going past and the police cars and the fire engines. And when I hear that, I have that visual of reaching out to them and reaching up to heaven and saying, oh God, there's somebody that needs you. There's somebody in distress. There's somebody that, that uh, needs your power. And I just pray, pray Lord God, that you don't take that body till that soul is saved. I pray Lord God, that you send your ministering angels Never underestimate the power of your prayer. You know, I might be the only person right now that is praying for them, but I'm bringing the spirit of God. I'm bringing the will of God. I'm bringing heaven to earth for their, um, for their situation, whatever they're in. Because of that, we have uh, a prayer group that meets on Thursday, and there's about eight of us, and we pray. We pray for all of you. I want you to know that. We pray for every ministry. 
We pray for everyone that is connected with any kind of ministry. Sometimes we just go up and down and pray for the on, in the pews, anoint them and pray, and ask God to bless you because we know the power of prayer and we will not underestimate the power of prayer. When someone receives Jesus, I said to, I said to uh, Ellen, uh, what is prayer to you? And Ellen says, well, it's talking with my best friend. And that's what it is. It's talking. We have that privilege. Imagine when you stop and you think of who God is, the creator of heaven and earth, and we have that privilege <laughs> to sit down and, or ride in your car or wherever you are to talk to him. When anybody receives Jesus as your Savior, I always say, now talk to the Lord like he's your best friend because that's exactly what he wants to be. You can't have a relationship with somebody if you don't talk to them. When I used to go to the hospital, I would say to the people that received Jesus, now you can have as much of Jesus Christ, you had to invite him in your heart, and now you can have as much of him as you make room for, but you need to talk to him, and that's called prayer. Boy, I'm telling you, I haven't, I've got a bunch of notes, and I, <clears throat> so what does the word of God, uh, it has so much to say about prayer, so first let's look at what the word of God says about the word of God. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, but that word is theonostros, and it means God breathed. So all scripture is given by the breath of God, God breathed, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. This scripture is the most important and awesome scripture talking about the word of God. This scripture tells you that it's the result of God's creative breath. Therefore, being God's own utterance, it is the very word of God. So I want to look at two aspects of prayer. The first one is um, fervent prayer, fervent effectual prayer. James 5.16 says, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 1 John 5.14-15 through 15 says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Effectual means Sufficient to produce a desired result. Fervent means constant, strenuous, and intense. James and John are both telling us that for our prayers to be effective, they must be fervent. They must be meaningful and in agreement with the will of God. So how do we know what the will of God is? How do we know what the will of God is? By reading his word. That's exactly what 2 Timothy 3.16 says, that his word is for instruction and reproof and correction so that the man of God and woman of God will be thoroughly furnished, complete in every good work. <clears throat> Hebrews 11.16 says, without faith it's impossible to please God because first we must know that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That doesn't mean half-heartedly. That means fervently. That means with intent. That means diligent. We seek him. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Wait, all right. So don't give up. If you're praying for unsaved loved ones, don't give up. Keep on praying, keep on asking, keep on seeking, and he will answer. Uh, the second phase, the aspect of prayer I want to look at is um, 
is one of my very favorite scriptures. This is my, the first scripture that I, that I um, memorized. It's Philippians 4, 6 through 8. You need a bigger pulpit. (laughs) Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Listen to this. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue... And if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Mm. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. It's hard not to be anxious in this world that we're living in today. Worry, anxiety. uh, Anxious means worry anxiety, unease, or a brooding fear, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. The Bible says, don't be anxious. We worry so much about things that never happen, things that never come to pass. Worry doesn't change a thing, does it? But you know what does? Prayer. Prayer changes things. So instead of worrying, we need to learn to take these things to the Lord in prayer. It says, be anxious for nothing. Nothing, but by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. That my Bible has this footnote. My Bible has this beautiful footnote. I just listened to this. Supplication is more than petitioning. It is prayer to fully transfer the burden of one's soul into God's hands. Isn't that beautiful? Casting all cares down, bringing every imagination into um, alignment with his word, everything that will exalt itself against the will of God in your life. We cast our cares upon the Lord because what? He cares for us. So when I'm going through something, I, I think it is scripture. Cast all my cares upon him because he cares for us. And I think of who he is. This is what I do. I go, he cares for me. He cares for me. He cares for me. <laughs> it's wonderful to know that God sent his only begotten son that whoso believeth in him would not perish, but it's but when you make it personal, God so loved me that He sent Jesus Christ, so that if I believe in Him, I would not perish, but I would have eternal life. So we cast our cares upon Him. We think of who He is. He is, He is, the Almighty God that can do anything. Matthew says. That what's impossible with man is possible with God. I went through a situation one time that was, it was when um, Dean passed away, Deanne's husband. And I was anxious. I was anxious for my daughter. It seemed like a hopeless situation. Forty-five years old, she's a young widow with two small children with no income. And, And I was fretting and anxious. And this one night I had a a fretful sleep, and I woke up in the morning, and I saw this word, like tattooed in the air, him possible, H-I-M-P-O-S-S-I-B-L-E. You know, all things are him possible. 
What can't he do? What situation can't he turn around? What can't he do? He is the almighty God, and he is the God of all things. He is the God of the impossible. So when you're going through something, is it possible for God to change it? Is it possible for God to work all things together for good? Yes, it is. And then I think he cares. What does that mean? He cares for us. He takes care of us, all of our needs. Whatever you need, whatever you need, he's there for you. And he cares for me, you, personal. He loves you so much. He loves each of us so much. Just like we are, he loves us. Thanksgiving is the key to victorious living. It really is. It says, make your uh, request known with thanksgiving. Thanks, say it with me. Thanksgiving is the key to victorious living. Probably people are sick and tired of me here and say it, but it is the truth. When you start thanking God, it's the will of God for you to be thankful. But no matter what situation I have gone through, you know, when I lost my husband, I thought that I, uh, I really didn't want to live. It was like I lost my best friend. Talk about we were like two peas in a pod, and all of a sudden I'm in this pod all by myself. And it was like the strangest thing. I like lost my identity. I lost my place because my place was always beside him. You know, I had my place in bed. I had my place at the kitchen table. I had my place in church. I had my place um, in the car. I had my place at the restaurant, you know, at the table. Wherever we were, I had my place. And then all of a sudden, I didn't have that compass. <laughs> I didn't know what my place was. And I started uh, thanking God for uh, the 62 years that I had with him. I saw a commercial on television about I've fallen and I can't get up. And I had a couple friends that had lost their husbands. And they got stuck there. And it was like they, they couldn't get up. And they couldn't get out of the situation. And I just started thanking God for the 62 years that I had with that wonderful man, for the children that I had because of him, because of the model that he was, for the all the laughs that we had, all the hugs and the kisses, all the dinners that we had, the vacations that we had, the life that we had was so good. And that gave me a, a peace. Instead of looking at my loss, I looked at what I had all those years. And just, just being so grateful and thankful is the key to victorious living. Last week, I went up to the hospital to get my things because it looks as though um, the chaplain's program isn't going to start up again. So I had shoes and an umbrella and money and clipboard and that. And I was so surprised when I went into the office. I had my drawer in the office. And I opened up my drawer, and I started gathering up my things. And I started feeling really bad, and I started to cry. And I thought, this phase of my life is over. I've been doing this for 37 years, two days a week for 37 years, and I'm never going to do this again. And I, and I just, I was just overwhelmed with sadness. And then I started thanking God for the 37 years that I was able to walk those halls, for the 37 years that I was able to go and visit patients, for the salvations, for the bodies that were healed, for the uh, comfort and the peace and the strength that was that was brought for the friendships that were made. It just, it turns, it turns, it, it, it's like God gives you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. But you know what? You've got to put the garment on. It's not going to do one bit of good if you just let it hang in your cupboard. You've got to put the garment of on, put the garment of praise on. So thankfulness is the key to living an awesome life. I've had an awesome life. God is just blessed. I just know the blessings of God. I always feel like I'm a walking, living, breathing testimony to the truth of God's word, to the goodness of God, to the love of God, to the peace of God.
to the joy of just being his child. Just being his child. I'm telling you, if there's anybody that doesn't know Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, don't miss it. <laughs> My only regret is that I was 42 years old. I wish I had not wasted so much time. Don't waste another day. Don't waste one more day. Let, be, let this be the day when you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to live your life for him. Is there anyone here right now? I'm looking around, but is there anyone here that doesn't have that personal relationship with Jesus? Is there anyone here that would like to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior to say this day, I want to be your child? You know, he's standing at the door and he knocks. Love that. Behold, he said, these are Jesus' words. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And if any man hears my voice and opens the door and invites me to come in, I will come in and I will have fellowship with him. Just put up your hand as a witness before the Lord. Don't be ashamed. He, was not, he wasn't ashamed to die for us on the cross. No? Nope. I pray to God you're all saved. Awesome, isn't it? Isn't it awesome to be saved? But if anybody is listening on uh, TV, all you have to do is, he's just a prayer away. Just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Make me your child. I want to live for you. And he'll, he'll hear that prayer. So, Lord, we just come in that precious, wonderful name. Again, Lord, just give you thanks. Thanks for who you are, Lord. Thanks for the truth of your word. Thanks for the joy of being your child. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in each of our lives. We trust you, Lord, with our loved ones. We thank you for yesterday and for today, and we trust you for tomorrow, Lord. Lord, the burdens of our soul, we transfer into your hands, Lord. Thank you for your hands, Lord. Lord, you guide us and lead us with your hands. You feed us with the integrity of your heart. Whose heart has more integrity? Whose hands are more skillful? We just thank you now, Lord God. We bless your holy name. We give you praise. And we honor you this day. I ask you to bless all the mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers. Give them something special, something sweet, something from you, Lord, something even better than chocolate. <laughs> Just a gift, Lord God, and a hope, and a dream, and a vision, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for life, and thank you for death. 